Hi weaving friends, today we've got another pot holder video on my homemade pot holder loom. I have two other previous videos to this one. The first video shows you actually how to make this loom at home from very basic materials and how to weave on it. The second one shows you how to make a t-shirt yarn pot holder and today we're going to be looking at changing colors and getting some different designs through that changing of colors. Those other videos that I mentioned will be linked down below. Now there are a couple of things that I want to mention before we just jump straight in. And that is if you watch my first video when I showed you how to actually make this pot holder loom, I didn't have any nails in the corners, but now I do. Now the thing is that today we're going to, in addition to weaving with the two colors, we're gonna be weaving diagonally. And in order to do that, to have like proper corners and points on the pot holder that you weave diagonally, you do need to have nails in the corners. So if you have a look at that first video on making the loom, all you need to do, all we did really, is just to eyeball it. We didn't even measure anything to put those corner nails in. Just had a look roughly where we thought that they should go and pop them in because otherwise we've got these big gaps at the edges and you don't get to have a corner on your pot holder. Um, another thing that I wanna talk about is the yarn considerations and why that's important. So for the width apart that these nails are on this particular pot holder loom, we do need to use either a doubled yarn, like a doubled DK weight maybe, or a thick, really thick yarn. So today I'm using um, an iron weight, both of these are about an iron weight yarn, which is an Australian 10 ply. It's a bit thicker. And one of them is multicolored and one of them is a solid color and I'm putting them together to contrast in the design. So when you choose your colors, you do want to have contrasting. For example, I've got purple in this multicolored yarn, but it's a much lighter purple than this really dark purple is. And so I know there's going to be enough contrast between them. So just to think about that when you're choosing your colors and the thickness of the yarn. So make sure that the thickness of the yarn is appropriate to the size of your loom. And I'm going to show you an example of why that's important. Here's the first diagonal sample that I wove. This obviously is just using a single color, but you can see how far apart it is spaced and how light and airy it is. So this was about a DK weight yarn, um, which is really not thick enough for this kind of spacing on this particular loom. Maybe fine on another type of loom that has closer spacing of the nails. The other reason I wanted to show you this weird looking piece is that um, I used an acrylic yarn for this piece and it really didn't turn out that well. You can see that it's kind of lumpy and bumpy, stretchy, a little bit weird. Like if I really pulled on this, it'd stretch out into weird shapes. It's not gonna sit flat, you know, it's just a, a strange little piece. And this is why it's good to use this size loom to do little samples of yarns. So depending on your acrylic, you know, I get asked all the time in weaving for all kinds of weaving on all kinds of looms, is acrylic okay? And it's a very big question because acrylics vary so, so much. So if you have an acrylic that has say, um, just as an example, a 50% wool component, then it's gonna be less likely to do weird things like this 100% acrylic. Personally, I don't use acrylic yarns very often. Um, I was just interested to see how this one would go on the loom, and now I know. So I'll show you a more successful sample that I did, and this was changing between two colors. These both were DK weight yarns, and I doubled them, the, which is fine. It's fine to double them. It does make a really nice, thicker fabric, which is more suitable for a pot holder, but the thing is, um, and this would be good for um, doing like panels, you know, squares and sewing them together to make a big blanket or something like that. So it's good for that. The doubling of the yarn 
can be a little bit tricky because you're weaving kind of towards the center. You'll see what I mean once I actually start doing it. The diagonal is a little bit different to just the regular straight weaving. So um, you end up not having a lot of space. And sometimes, maybe if you haven't done diagonal weaving very much, it might be a bit confusing um, knowing, oh, you know, which, which yarn am I going under or over or whatever because you have to make sure that you're treating those two strands as one strand. Um, so I recommend using a thicker wool um, over doubling, but definitely, but definitely give the doubling a try if you want to. The other thing that I didn't do on this piece that I will do today on our piece today that we're weaving together is I didn't leave my yarn tails long enough. And you can see now why that's an issue. They're not long enough for me to needle weave them in. And so all they're doing is sticking out of my piece, which is not all that attractive. We wanna be able to needle weave those in. So I'll definitely be doing that today. All right, I think we're ready to get started. I did show you this tool in the very first video that I did on making the loom as well. And this is optional. You can use a crochet hook though. A crochet hook is not really long enough for reaching right across the loom when you need to do that as you're weaving towards the center. So um, if that's an issue for you, if you find the crochet hook too difficult and you don't have or you don't wanna make one of these, then a Tunisian crochet hook is much better because it is ever so much longer, but still has the hook on the end, which is the important part. So from here, I'm just gonna choose one of the yarns. I think I'll start with this one. And I'm going to make a slip knot. However you do that, whatever your particular method for doing that is. And once you make the slip knot, you, instead of tightening it up, you wanna pull it out and hook it over one end of the loom, of the diagonal, and keep feeding it out until you've got enough to hook over the other end. Now we're gonna be doing with our tension, we want our tension sort of firm, but not tight, if that makes sense. So you can see that that's firm as in it's not so slack that it's dropping down to the table, but it's slack enough that I can twang it. Um, by the way, did I say that this was wool? This is wool and this is wool. So I'm using 100% wool yarns for this one today. That's just what I've got and that's just what I'm using. Now that slip knot, I'm just going to put an extra knot on that to keep it nice and secure for me. All right, done. That's the first step. So we're going to take the working end of the yarn. Um, if you don't know what I mean by the working end, it's the end that's attached to the ball. So we've got the end that is the tail and see that I've left a, a long enough tail to needle weave in after. And that's just gonna sit there and hang out. We won't worry about it for now. We're going to bring the working end around the first nail, and then we're gonna go up to the corner. So all of this is gonna be kind of corner to corner weaving. So we go up to the next nail on my left-hand side, and I make the yarn go around there as well. You can move your ball over if that's easier so you don't get tangled. Okay, so we're going around that one. So when we get to that top peg there, we're going to just hold that yarn under a little bit of tension and just hold it kind of away from the work, just so that it's out of your way at the moment. I'm gonna transfer that to my left hand. I'm right-handed, by the way. Now this is where I bring in my hook. And what I'm gonna do is every time I start, weaving, I want to think over first, over, under, over, under. So we're not including this working tail of yarn in our first over. We actually want to hold that up a little bit so it's out of the way and the hook's going to go underneath it. So then we've got this first bit of yarn here and I'm going to go over that. That means I'll go under the next one and then over the next one. From there, I want to bring this working yarn over hook onto it, pull it through, and then I'm gonna pop it onto the first peg on the right hand side. Then I can let that go. Now see what that's done, it's created a kind of a loop here. I've got the working end here, 
but there's a loop up here. That's the loop we want to work with next. So we're going to bring that down. You can bring that down with your finger, whatever. The hook doesn't matter. I'll bring it with the hook so that my fingers are out of the way and you'll be more likely to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to bring that right down and then I'm going to put it on the little peg to the right of the corner peg. So you see what I've done there is kind of like an identical thing. First I worked on the left and I hooked all the yarn on the left and then I worked on the right and did the same thing. So that the first three corner pegs are filled on both sides. Now we come to the changing color part. I'm going to change color at this point. You don't have to, you can change color when you want to, but to make my design a little more punchy, I'm gonna change it here. I'm going to leave a longer tail on that working yarn and just cut that. So that ball, I'll just pop to the side for a moment so it's out of the way. And then I'll bring in my new ball, okay. And I just want to knot that onto the cut end, but I don't want to knot it up here at the end. I want to knot it closer to the peg um, so that I've got those longer tails for needle weaving in afterwards. So I'm just going to do a basic double knot to make those yarns hold together. There we go. And now this is my working yarn. So what have I got? Three tails and one working yarn. So I'll just unravel a little bit. It's handy to have just a little bit of yarn unraveled so you're not kind of tugging at a bowl and getting frustrated with that. So now that that new working yarn is on, we can see that this peg right here is full. It's already got yarn on it. So we're gonna go around the next peg up. And I don't want the tail, I want the working yarn. So around the next peg, and I'm going to go up to the corner and see which pegs available here. And it's this one. This is the next one. So every peg has to be filled eventually. And we just do that one at a time. So I'm going to pop my ball over here again to get it out of my way. And then I'm going to go around that peg right there. And then I'm doing exactly the same as I did before. Only this time I've got more threads to deal with. So for the working end, Remember, I'm just gonna kind of hold that up a little bit and out of the way, not up so high that it pops off your nail there, but just out of the way, just as a reminder of, okay, this is not coming in with what I'm doing right here. So I'm going, remember, remember that we always do over, under. So over is first. Here's the first bit of yarn on the loom. I'm gonna go over that strand. Then I'm gonna go under the next one over the next one, under the next one, and over. Okay, and then that allows me, oops. and then that allows me to be at this point where I can hook that piece of working yarn that I've still got under tension, so it's not going anywhere, I'm holding it, and I'm gonna pull that across and pop it on the next available peg, which is right here. Remember that gives us a kind of loose loop here. So I'm going to use my hook. As I said before, you can use your finger, whatever you want. I'm using my hook to make it a bit clearer to you. And I'm gonna put that on the next available peg at this corner. Okay, lovely. Let's um, have a look at what is happening here so far. As we place the yarn on each peg and at the top, as we go over and under, we weave through, that weaves the yarn through for us. And then when we come down to the bottom, bringing that loop down, we put that on one of the pegs, bring the yarn over to the other side and we have a row. So you can see there's a row in the corner there there's a row in the corner there. Uh, sorry, there are two rows. There's the multicolored yarn, little row there, and there's the dark purple yarn. And same up here, multicolored and then the dark row. Those are rows of your weaving. So this is quite a different way to weave, but it's really fun. It's really satisfying. 
Now I can see that with this yarn that I've chosen to use, again, I think it's a little on the thin side because look at how far apart those warp threads are. I would really like them closer together than that. So I, I do think it's probably gonna be a little bit too open by the time I finish, but I'm gonna press on um, and see how it turns out anyway, because every piece that you do on a loom like this is a learning piece. It teaches you something, whether it's something that you like, or whether it's something you don't like and you don't wanna repeat. So let's press on. Here is my working yarn still under tension. I'm gonna do another round before I change colors again. So nothing to do on this round except to go ahead with the weaving. We don't need to cut anything or change it. So this end that I'm holding, I can see that the next available peg is this one. So I'm gonna go around that and I'm gonna take that up to the corner, get my yarn out of the way and then pop that on the next available peg at the corner. It's very, um, it's a very simple process. Like it's very well laid out. You can see very clearly which peg you've got to be going on next. All right, and then while I keep that yarn under some tension and I keep it out of the way, I'm gonna go over, then under, then over, then under, over, under, over at the end. And then I'm gonna bring that working yarn across so that I can hook it, pull it through that space that I just created and pop it on the next available nail or peg or whatever you wanna call it. Then I've got my little loop here that I'm gonna bring down with my hook. And you see how this row here is being woven while we bring this down. And then I'm gonna pop that on the next available hook and try to get my hook out. There we go. So that brings me back to the next available peg, which is here. And I'm wanting to change my yarn again. So let's do that. These colors are really pretty together. I'm gonna to leave a few inches for a tail and then I'll bring in my other multicolored yarn and I'm going to knot them up close to the peg, leaving a tail on the new yarn that I'm bringing in as well. And the length of tails is really a little bit your choice. What length are you gonna be comfortable with to needle weave in? Some people might ha uh, be able to get away with shorter lengths than others. All right. So now I've got another tail, but I'm leaving that as it is. And I'm bringing the working yarn around the next peg. Okay. So every, just as a check, every peg should be looped around once you've gotten past the woven part. Okay. So there shouldn't be any nails or pegs that you've already taken the yarn past that isn't, that doesn't have some yarn around it already, if that makes sense. I don't think I said that particularly well, but um, hopefully you grasp my meaning. So up to the next corner and the next available peg. There we go. I'm gonna hold that under some tension and away, and I'm gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over. Grab my working yarn and pull it through and pop it on the next available peg on the right hand side and then I'm going to take that loop down and that weaves the row as we go you can check that as you're pulling your yarn down that that looks all correct pop it on the next available peg to the right and then I've got my new row and I come back over to the other side I'm going to continue to weave with this yarn again before changing colors again. So I go around the next available peg and I'm checking to see that I haven't missed a peg. I've gone in the correct space. Now, if your yarn is starting to build up a little bit with the rows, um, as it may be if you are using a thicker yarn than I am, then you can just give it a little beat 
you can either do that with your fingers, you can do it with um, the crochet hook or the hook like this that you're using and just help to beat that into place. As we weave more towards the center, we'll have less space to weave in and so the beating may become more important depending on the yarn that you're using. As I said, this one um, has quite an open set. So up to the corner again and I think by this point you will be getting it because it doesn't take that long. You're just repeating the same actions. The only thing that's really different is when you stop to change your yarn colors. Okay, so over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Grab that working yarn, take it through, pop it on the next available peg, and then bring that loop right down onto the next available peg on that side. Then we come over and we're going uh, in the next space that will take us around the next available peg. And I will give that a little beat into place. Very nice. And now we're changing colors again. What do you think, easy enough? Might take a, a few goes of doing it and watch over the first part of the video if you need to remember how to get started and all of that. Watch over it a few times and I think you'll be absolutely fine. This is another one of those weaving activities that can be done while you're watching a movie or listening to an audio book and you know it's just relaxing and just so repetitive you don't have to think too much once you are practiced and you know what you're doing. All right so that one is knotted on. I could have done my knot up a little bit higher just it a little bit but that's okay anyway. All right, so we pop around the next peg. Oh, that's my tail, not my working yarn. So I grab my working yarn. I'm not gonna get very far with the tail. And up to the next available peg. And then just popping that yarn out of my way. And then around that peg. And then I'm holding that while I go over, under, and just keep weaving in and out of those warp threads. Pop that on the next available peg and then come down to the next available peg in this corner. And then over to the next space. Okay, so here's a little example of when I would want to be beating that weft in. When it's um, kind of bubbled, like it's curved. You can see it's a little bit curved here as well. So I'll just help it along, pop it down. Uh, if you're wondering like how much should I be beating it? If you look at the nail on this side, the last peg you went around, and the one on this side, well, they should be a fairly straight line. The yarn should be fairly straight in between them. So that, that gives you an indicator. So if you beat too hard, then you might be going back towards these pegs. You don't want that. You wanna keep it kind of straight, straight-ish. Don't obsess over it, because it doesn't matter that much. Okay, around the next available peg, up to the next available peg up here, and then over, under, and so on. You could get quite quick at this. So there's not a lot more that I need to tell you at this point, except you just keep weaving in this manner. It's when you get closer to the middle and you start running out of pegs that I'll need to come back and speak with you again. So I'm gonna continue on um, and I'm going to continue changing my colors. So I'm changing my colors at the moment every two threads. So you can see I've got two dark, um, two multi, two dark, two multi, except in the middle where I've done four multi just because I wanted to. Um, so I'm gonna be changing colors again now and I'm gonna continue on with that pattern. 
you could do random changing colors if you wanted to and just see how that worked out for this sample i had a bit of a plan but i didn't know exactly how i was going to be changing my colors and it worked out just fine it's quite lovely so um, i'll continue on and i will see you back here once i get closer to the middle So I only have now these two pins either side of the corner pins on each side that are left and this is where it gets a little bit squishy and you might have to change tactics a little bit. Also if you get to this point and you find that the number of pins on this side don't match the number of pins on this side then it's quite possible that you skipped a nail somewhere. So just if that happens to you go back check over it check that every nail has been wrapped 
with yarn. If you find you've skipped a nail, say you skipped one down here somewhere, you can actually pick up the last one that went around and put it, like you can move them manually and that will be okay. All right, so it's not a huge deal if that happens. Now, where am I at? I have done two of my multicolor. So I am gonna change to my dark color again, just to keep that pattern of two and two of the contrasting threads. So um, doing your last one, as I said, it can be a little bit squishy, but we'll see how we go. Um, I've got a couple of tactics to help with that too. So again, um, just as I have been doing for the whole thing, I'm gonna go around the last two pegs. Okay, so now you see why you want a hook that is long enough, because you're supposed to get your hook from this side to this side. However, one thing you can also do is come in up further, like so, and do a little bit at a time and grab it that way. Just make sure if you do that, that you've got your count of over under correctly set. So for example, let's say if I wanted to come in at the middle here, I'm gonna first check over under, 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 over. Okay, so I'm gonna go over that thread, under the next one, over under, to ensure that I have that rhythm going correctly because I wanna keep the exact same pattern of over under that I've been doing since the beginning. All right, and that brings us to the other side. And I need to then grab this yarn. Okay, so it's going around the nail, but then it's also gonna come in my hook as I travel back. So it is exactly the same as we have been doing the whole time, but it's just all that bit squishier. And you, you have to work a little bit harder on your way back um, to make sure that you're not getting caught on the cross threads. I would say this is really only the, you know, one of the only parts that is actually a little bit tricky. Okay, so I've got to that thread there that I went over. So I'm gonna stop there. And then I'm going to hold on to that little loop of yarn I've got there. I can make that a little bit bigger. So it's easy to hold on to. Okay, so I've done the pattern up to this point. And then I can come in from this side with the over under. And that just makes it a little bit more manageable, especially if you're using a crochet hook, you might wanna do it in three sections rather than two. Okay, and then I can grab that loop that I made and carefully head back through. Lovely, pop that on that corner hook, um, that corner nail, and then on the other corner nail like that. And then what we have left is two corner nails that haven't been wrapped yet. And what we also have is like a double thread in the middle and it looks like this. So it's traveling the same path and that's good. That's what's supposed to happen. Normally you'd be like, oh no, I didn't go over under properly because these are both in the same shed or following the same path. But that's actually what we want at this, at this point. Okay, so at this point, um, I want to separate these out and beat them to their own sheds. So remember we've been weaving inwards the whole time. So one of these wefts comes sort of down, gets beaten down, the other one gets beaten up in a way, but you know, mainly to the other side, it gets separated. Okay, so they're both separate now. Um, then I need to decide what do I wanna do as far as my last thread goes? Because we've only got these two nails left. So we're going to finish with one thread. If I put another double thread through here, that double thread would be in the same shed again. So I'd have a double in the middle, which would really stand out and I don't want that. But because these two, these last two that we did, they were in the same shed, 
The next one is going to be one single thread and we're going to put it in the opposite shed. So it's all going to look good and proper as it should. So the only decision I have to make is do I want this last one to also be dark in my dark contrasting yarn or do I want it to be in my lighter yarn? And the answer for me is I want it to be in the lighter yarn just because. I didn't think too much about that, I just decided it. So I'm going to cut this one, the dark one, bring in my multicolored one and just as I have been doing the entire project, I'm going to knot that at the next peg, which is the corner peg, leaving tails long enough for later. Now this one, we're going to weave it through, but in a different way, we're going to needle weave it. And so you'll need a tapestry needle. Any tapestry needle will do, just make sure that the eye of the tapestry needle is big enough for your yarn to go through. So I love my clover bent tips. So I'm going to use one of those. And they have these really nice big eyes, so I don't have any worries there. The next thing is, well, our working yarn, our last bit of working yarn, it's attached to a ball. So if I want to thread this with a needle, it's not going to work while it's attached to the ball. So what I want to do is measure off a good length. And what I do is just go around that peg once and then back again. Okay, so it's double the length corner to corner. And I'm going to cut that and then take the yarn back to where it was. And then I've got plenty of length and I'm going to thread that needle. Okay, so because this is in the top left hand corner, I'm going to turn it around towards me so that the working end of the yarn is towards me because I want to be working from this end up. And that would be a little bit awkward. if I had the loom turned around the other way. So I want the weft yarn to come out on one side just as it has been for the whole project. And then I want to go around this peg on the corner. Make sure you go around it. Okay, don't get confused with my tails there because I've got the extra bit of yarn. But to go around it and then have a look at what the last bit of yarn did it went over the last cross thread that it was going across so for you you want to go under that we're going to do the opposite remember we've got these two in the same shed and so we want to do the opposite shed for this one and so once I've gone under that thread at the beginning it's just a matter of going over and under each of these threads in the middle and I'm going to obviously have to pull that through at some point because my needle is not that long. Okay, so I've looped around that corner peg and I'm continuing the pattern of over and under the threads. So that last one went under, so it's gonna go over. Gonna pull that through again. I wasn't too sure about these colors, but I actually think now they look fabulous. Really good. Over and under. So you can see that for this whole project, you're doing the same thing, except at the very beginning and at the very end. They're the only times that you change what you're doing. Keep needle weaving, making sure that you're doing the opposite to the two threads either side. Okay, and I'm finishing over the edge. And then I've got my very last peg there that's left bare and I wanna wrap around that just as I wrapped around the thread on this side. And then I want to try and secure this thread somehow. So while I go around, I'm gonna go under the first thread. Okay, so you've got a loop there, but it's not really secure yet. So you can, there's a couple of ways you could secure this. You could needle weave it in a little bit further, um, but then you couldn't, it would be a bit difficult because you couldn't match up your sheds. 
So you could try weaving, uh, going into the yarn itself and securing it that way. This is a, a trick that I use in embroidery where I make the thread go through itself by separating the strands and do that in like close proximity. And it, it makes a little knot. So I'm just trying to come through from the bottom now, which is a little bit difficult. It keeps jumping out of the way. Or is that just my eyesight? That is entirely possible. Okay, so I've gone through there and then I'm gonna go down right next to where I came up, but not in the exact same spot. Go through. So the idea here being that you want to secure that end of yarn, but you don't want to make it really visible. Okay, going up again. Sorry for my finger being in the way, but it's kind of necessary. I need the pressure of my finger. Okay, probably one more time. Otherwise we'll get too much of a bulge. So I'll go down again, through the yarn, and then that should be pretty secure, okay? And it's not really too visible unless you're looking for it. So we have finished our square. The only thing I want to do now is just go over it before I actually take it off the loom. And with my little needle or with whatever you want to use, I just want to even up anything that seems a little bit gappy or a little bit too close together, just where it hasn't um, come together as much as I would like it to. And you don't have to be perfect about this. The main idea really is to just make sure that it's not really noticeable in any place that it's um, further apart or closer together in a way that stands out. And I think this is pretty good. Some of these could be a little better. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave mine there anyway, because I think that's fine. And it will even out a little bit in the wet finishing. Okay, and then this is the great part. There's no more finishing to do on your edges once you're done. You can just pick any point and start taking that off. A needle's a good way to do it because it gets in underneath the thread nicely. And you just start popping them off. Anywhere at all. And because of the way we wove them, they just pop off and then they don't unravel. So the, the only finishing we've got to do next before you do any kind of wet finish is to needle weave these tails in. So if you're wondering what might I do with a bunch of squares like this. Well, I like the idea of a blanket um, or even, you know, something a little bit smaller like um, a placemat. This itself isn't big enough for a placemat, but if you sewed, say, four of them together, it would be. There are lots and lots of projects that you can do by sewing squares together. You know, the um, Little Looms magazine is really good for project ideas for little looms because that's what it's all about. All right, so that's our square off the loom. Let's just lay it out and have a look. You can see it's a little bit floppy and a bit shrinky and a little bit lumpy and that's okay. So when I go to wet finish this, I'm going to actually treat it like a piece of knitting. Um, so I do my normal wet finish and then I would use blocking pins and some foam mat to block that out to a nice square shape. That is how I would deal with that. 
So let's have a look at all of these ends that we've got here. Um, by the way, if your project was appropriate for it, you could use these, all of these ends as a kind of fringe on one side if you wanted to. But if you don't, then we can thread them up. Again, using just a tapestry needle that's big enough to fit your yarn. And then I'm just going to take it in and I'm going to use a similar idea to what I did before by kind of splitting the yarn and working through it that way. If I split the yarn, then I can follow the same track that the yarn has already gone without it looking weird. Because if I try and needle weave it, I'm going to have that problem again of it being in a different shed and it's going to stand out and it's going to look a bit weird. So I'll just pull that tail through. Okay, so once you've got that needle woven in, just pull it out a little bit so that it's not sitting too tight in there. And that's my first end woven in. I'm going to leave that tail until after I've wet finished, then it's dried, then I cut all of the tails that are woven in off. And then I've got secure tails. So just to do one more, to give you an idea. And you see now why we need the length. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and I'm going to split through one of these yarns that's nearest to the knot. And of course, that is the same color because I'm trying to make it invisible. Okay, so splitting the ply right through the yarn. In addition to making it more invisible, splitting the ply in this way makes the knot or the tail, the path of the tail stronger because it's kind of held in there by the yarn. And it's a little bit tricky. only because it slips a little bit. So how far in you take your tails, up to you. Um, what have I got? Probably an inch, an inch and a half there that I've taken mine in. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue to do that for all of my tails before wet finishing, then blocking, and then I can decide what to do with my square next. I'm weaving a second one, but I'm doubling the yarn. So I thought I'd just quickly show you a little bit how that looks. I'm using the same two yarns, but what I've done is from the main ball of the variegated yarn, I've just um, wound off a little ball, which I just do with my hands very quickly. And then I've joined them together as though they're one yarn. So for the slip knot at the start and taking the yarns around on the first diagonal, normally you'd have two, but here I've got four. Okay, and so what that would look like for actually weaving with, trying to get my tails out of the way here. Um, as I said, it's a little bit more finicky just because it's twice as much yarn and you have to really pay attention. Okay, so I'd still do everything exactly the same, going around the first peg, going around that peg. All right, and then when it comes to the hook, I'm gonna go over under again, but instead of going over one, I'm gonna go over the first two, but treat them as one. So one, over, under, and over. And then I need to get my yarn out from underneath my hook. Okay, go back around that one. And then pull that through and onto that first peg and then grabbing that loop and taking it down. So yeah, just the same, but with doubled yarn. Okay, and then over to the next available peg. And then if I wanted to change colors again, well, once again, I've woven off, uh, I've wound off an extra ball of this dark contrast yarn. And so instead of attaching, uh, instead of knotting one piece of yarn on, 
I'd take the two ends together and knot those together with the variegated yarn. Again, leaving the tails. You might, if you were doubling your yarn, you probably want to think a little bit more about how many color changes you're going to have because you've got twice as much bulk in the tails and that's got to be hidden somehow and obviously it's not going to hide as well as single tails will. So around the next peg, up around the next one and then hold that and then I'm going in again to go over and then I need to make sure of which yarn's next in the order. So under and over, under, over. And then pulling those two through. So I will continue with this piece and then I'll give you a brief look at the end of the video. And you can see a comparison of how the single or the doubled yarn looks. This is my finished piece with the doubled yarn. I do like the way that it looks more, um, but I will say that it's tricky because it's so squishy. You have the opposite problem to the other one, which is a little bit open set. This one doubled is just a little bit hard, especially once you get to the center. It's still doable. What I would probably do is just opt to use either a thinner yarn and double that or a yarn single that is as thick as this one is doubled, if that makes sense. Now, here's my first sample that we did together. I did change the design as well because I was running out of the dark yarn. So um, don't expect the designs to look exactly the same, but just as far as the fabric goes, this is the first one. You can see it's quite soft, it's quite airy, and um, it's fine but it's just a little more open than I would like. And this one, on the other hand, is quite thick. Well, I haven't got it off the loom yet, but yeah, it's quite thick. You can tell straight away. So if I bring it up a little bit closer, you can see the, the doubled yarn there, and then that's almost like a basket weave, which is a very nice effect. And I really do like that one. So that's another option as well, if you want to give it a go. It might depend for you on, well, first of all, the types of yarns that you have, the thicknesses, whether you've got yarns that are thick enough to just use them singly. And it might also depend whether you have any wrist pain, finger pain, um, problems with dexterity. I wouldn't recommend trying to do a thicker one. It's just a little bit too hard on the body. So there you have it. That's the comparison. I like both of them, I think they look great and uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you give it a go as well. Don't forget to check out those original videos that I had, especially the one for how to make this loom and another reminder that in the original loom I didn't put the corner nails on and so you'll need to do that in order to weave diagonally like this. Until next time, happy weaving!